Welcome back to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox, and our special guest this week is financial commentator and former portfolio manager, Victor Adair, still an active trader, at least on his own behalf in the marketplace. And Victor, we talked and you give a terrific explanation of the financial trauma the world has been through in the last 18 to 24 months. How have the markets, particularly here at home in North America, managed to get through all of these bizarre economic times? Well, we have interest rates that are at about the lowest level we've seen in our lifetime. The reason they are there is the authorities take the view that those low interest rates will stimulate the economy. Yes. The economy was, let's say, on its knees. And one of the things that got the economy on its knees was in the depths of the crisis in the fall of 08 and the spring of 09. Nobody wanted to lend money to anybody because you weren't sure you were going to get it back. Mm -hmm and the credit markets froze up. And I remember saying at the time, credit is more important than gasoline to our economy right now. And I, I really mean that, but I, I say that so people get it. The credit markets have frozen up. Getting the interest rates down and getting this massive stimulus into the markets from the authorities caused people to relax a little bit. They weren't quite so worried. So some lending started to happen. But there, we're, we're, we're nowhere near back to the level of lending, uh, maybe even reckless lending, that was going on before we hit the peak and prices fell into the hole. I think we've seen with the low interest rates the way they are, the economy has at least stabilized and maybe done better in different sectors. The stock market has done better. Commodity prices have done better. The Canadian dollar in the depths of the crisis was at around 78 cents against the U.S. dollar. We're now at around par. Right. You know. Right. We know that the price of gold has gone up. The prices of a lot of things have risen. And in our world, we generally think that rising prices are a good thing. So, you know, that's kind of how it's gone. But that's that's really broad brush. Certainly through that period of time, we've had our ups and downs. I referenced earlier just this past summer. There was a real fear that we're going into a double dip and the, the stock markets were down. Say the spring into the early summer, the worry was maybe the euro was going to fall apart. I recall that clearly. Right? You okay. bet. Yeah. And, and that caused a lot of fear. And of course, the fear is, is a very powerful force in the financial markets. You know, one way of measuring that in the currency sphere is that the Swiss franc a bastion of safety mm -hmm. was skyrocketing in value relative to the euro and the Swiss hated it because of course the Swiss try to export their goods mostly to their neighbors around them and as their currency shot up as people sought the refuge of the Swiss franc made the, the Swiss franc so expensive and made it difficult for the Swiss manufacturers to sell to their neighbors. So uh, we've had certainly some ups and downs, some volatility. My my, probably my safest bet is we're going to have more of that oh, yeah. as we go forward. Sure. But markets, of course, uh, the, the wide cliche is markets hate uncertainty. And yet, in probably one of the most uncertain years any of us can recall, uh, the markets have, well, we're not in, in the dumps in terms of, we're not at year end right now, but we're in the fourth quarter. And the markets talk, give us some specific numbers about the, the Dow and the, the uh, TSX and the NASDAQ as they've gotten through 2010. Well, let's say we're up on the year and now I'm trying to picture charts in my mind and, and say how much. I mean, I, I know, for instance, the last couple of months, the NASDAQ has been the strongest uh, stock market in, in North America and it's about up about 20% in two months. Uh, really, I can't tell you just by memory, okay. how much we were up from the beginning of but the year. But minus, minus the specifics, Victor, yeah. it is up across the board, is it not? We're up. We've, we've seen, here's a way of looking at it. Riskier markets go down faster and go up faster than less risky markets. So on balance, people who were very frightened in the spring of 09, you know, Treasury bill yields in the United States were negative. Mm -hmm. People were that frightened. So as we've gone forward from that period of time, people have been a little more willing to take on riskier assets. So riskier assets have gone up more than less risky assets. So that's a measure. What we call it in the market is kind of, is it a risk on trade or is it a risk off trade? When people are scared, they avoid risk. 
when they're willing to be not quite so frightened, they're willing to take on risk. For instance, since June of this year, the Australian dollar in June was about 86 cents Canada. It's now at par. The Australian dollar is a riskier asset than the Canadian dollar. The reason, there's two reasons. Okay. It's, it's per, Australia is right next door to China. Mm -hmm. Canada is right next door to the United States. So the Australian dollar got bought relative to the Canada and the market saw that and a lot of capital around the world jumped into the Australian dollar market, speculating in it. The volume of trading in the Australian dollar is way out of proportion to how big the Australian dollar is in the world. In fact, from a short-term trading point of view, the trend in the Australian dollar being an example of money going into risky assets mm -hmm. has led the United States stock market. Oh, okay. So, so people have been willing to take on risk well, because they're more comfortable than they were in the spring of 09. This must be welcome news, particularly to small cap and mid cap companies who in, represent a greater degree of risk simply by being sure. smaller, yeah. uh, must have had a terrible time in the last 24 months generating the kind of capital they need to develop and continue expanding their operations. Well, the small cap companies listed in Canada, particularly resource sector, mm -hmm. had a real tough time raising money, Yeah. Okay, and they, they need fresh money to do things. Certainly another aspect, another way of measuring this is emerging markets have been the beneficiary of capital flow as people are, again are willing to take money from the center and go out toward the periphery that's moving from safe to more risky. Emerging markets have outperformed the domestic, uh, well, let's call it the you know, more traditional markets like the European stock markets or the North American, uh, American stock markets. So uh, it's some people feel more comfortable taking their money to Brazil for example, which sure. is a very right. hot marketplace very right hot. now. And they're more comfortable playing in the Brazilian marketplace than they are in New York or Toronto. That's right. And simply why? What's the basic I, reason? I, I'm giving you, it's an example of when people are fearful, they want to come back to the center. And they had cause to be fearful. Now, as they've relaxed, they're less inclined to be fearful. Money has gone into riskier assets. For instance, the Australian dollar has gone up more than the Canadian dollar. The Brazilian stock market's stronger than New York. Our special guest this week on the Money and Wealth Show is Victor Adair, and we've got lots more ahead. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of Gold Ray Resources Corp. Our major project is in Shandong Province, China. It's a gold project with a 43101 resource. We're currently negotiating a 16.5 million U.S. loan to take it into production at 1,500 tons per day. For more information, go to goldray.com or phone me directly at 604-531-9639.